controls on top of it to play it, and I have controls to jump around. So that's the new QuickTime 4. Just incredible quality, the greatest player ever delivered on the internet, beautiful audio and video, live streams with real content in it, and the ability to deliver not only MP3 audio, but interactive audio and video with tools like Flash. Thanks, Phil. Thank us. And all those features you saw demoed are in the free player. OK. That's pretty cool, huh? So now we get to Mac OS, <clears throat> our operating systems. Let me review for a minute. You're all, I think, familiar with Mac OS 8.5. We launched Mac OS 8.5 last October. That's uh, seven months ago. <clears throat> I'm incredibly pleased to report, uh, well, and, and it had some cool features in it. Sherlock, which was maybe the coolest, a whole new way to search on the internet. And this has been really popular, a meta search engine, if you will, where you can put in one query, and it can dispatch that query to anywhere from a few to dozens of search engines on the internet, automatically take back their asynchronous results, and sort them by relevancy. It's been a big deal. Some major improvements to Apple Script and ColorSync, and we announced that uh, Mac OS 8.5 had the fastest network copy in the business, faster than any version of Windows, including NT. And What's been really great is in the last seven months, we have shipped 3.6 million copies of Mac OS 8.5, which, <clears throat> which is, I think, great for all of us and shows that we can fairly rapidly move new technology out into the marketplace. Now, today, we're announcing Mac OS 8.6, which is an update to Mac OS 8.5. And Mac OS 8.6 features of just a lot of things, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of little features, a lot of enhancements. But the biggest ones are longer battery life. If you have an existing PowerBook, upgrading to 8.6 will upgrade your battery life. Uh, some nice enhancements to Sherlock, AppleScript, ColorSync, the latest Java stuff. And uh, if you're in design and publishing, uh, some really cool new features in the LaserWriter driver, which you find quite useful. We actually started out uh, with the plan for Mac OS 8.6 to just make it a very small, simple, bug fix type of release on top of 8.5. But then a few things started to happen, and we realized we could actually put some other interesting things in there. The great example being the, the feature of the longer battery life, which is one of the contributors to the five-hour power, uh, the, the five-hour battery life of the new PowerBook you just saw announced. What we did there is actually we made some core changes right down inside the nanokernel with some new interesting technologies that really make the system much, be much, much better behaved for things like battery life. And you know, we even thought for a moment, should we delay this stuff till a larger release of the next larger release of the Mac OS? And in the end, we just couldn't because this stuff's so good, we want to get it out to our customers. So we're really happy about this. Now, the only one I want to talk about here is the battery life. In our tests, we run, we have sort of city and highway tests, and this is the increase in battery life on an existing uh, power book before the new ones. Three hours and 10 minutes on 8.5, four hours and 20 minutes on 8.6. And again, your mileage will vary, but as you can see, you know, it's a pr pretty big increase. So I think people will see anywhere from a 25 to, you know, 37 percent increase in their battery life just by upgrading their software. We're doing power management in a much smarter way. And Mac OS 8.5 is available today, downloadable off the web, free at apple.com for 8.5 owners. Right? Only works with if you already have 8.5. If you want 8.6, just go out and upgrade to 8.5 and freely download 8.6 off our website. It's also a worldwide release available today and download in approximately 10 different languages. <clears throat> now let's move on to the next major release of the Mac OS. Internally, it's codenamed Sonata. It's coming out this fall. And it's got over 50 new features in it. It's pretty hot. <clears throat> We're going to give you a sneak peek today 
but we don't want to say too much because we like to hold some things back for surprise when we announce the product. And so our sneak peek today is just going to focus on really two things. One is Sherlock 2, which is the next generation of Sherlock. We, the, the response we've gotten from Sherlock has been overwhelmingly positive, and we've been hard at work on improving it even still, and Sherlock 2 will ship in Sonata this fall. And secondly, we've gotten a lot of feedback that people using Macintoshes at work, in school, at home, want multiple users on the same machine. And we sell some software that allows people to do that. We sell it mostly into education, but it's an extra thing you've got to add. Could we just build that right into the operating system? And we are going to do that for Sonata. And so we'd like to ask Phil to come back up Let's and give us a Phil demonstration. Let's get Phil back out here. I have a job. Getting to play with all this great stuff. Um, this is very early, so as many of you who write software know, uh, the demo gods we hope are with us. And all goes well, but if, if not, I know you'll be understanding. Um, what I have is a... By the way, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, a standard part of the demo was entry into MaxBug. Yes. <laughs> we're beyond that, hopefully. I think we're beyond that. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, so what we have is a Power Mac G3 running Sonata, and um, it looks pretty familiar, but you'll start to notice a couple of things as we get into it that are so exciting. The first one, as Steve said, is Sherlock 2. Sherlock 2 is evolving and changing very quickly to meet a lot of the things our customers need most and to make it easier and easier to search on the Internet. First of all, it has a nicer interface, matches a lot more some of the great things you see happening with the QuickTime player. And inside this interface, I can do, as before, searching across the Internet as a meta search tool, that is, talking to all the different search engines on the web simultaneously and getting them all to work for me get from one easy, comfortable interface. 